And I, you know what? I, I do want to show one more thing. After this thing gets all wigged out again, I'll, I want to show you guys one more thing that a lot of people like to do, and, and I'm not a big fan of it, and I'll show you why. And, well, no, I can't say that. There are times I use this test. It's the unplug it test. You know, unplug the mass airflow sensor. Let's see how it runs. If it runs better, then we have a bad mass airflow sensor. And it's one I've used for years. It does work. It doesn't work on all cars, number one, and it doesn't work in all situations. So you see, again, we're back buried again on our fuel trims. Lean O2, both upstream and downstream. Lean long-term, lean short-term, or rich command, sorry. Lean condition, rich commands. I'm going to unplug the mass airflow just to see if those numbers improve. Mass airflow sensor is now unplugged. What immediately happened? O2 went rich. Short term went negative. Long term is coming down negative. Sorry, not negative, it's coming back down. But do you see this guy's balancing this guy back out? And look, I'm actually moving rich and lean stoichiometric right now. Now, you, we know what's wrong with the car now, don't we guys? It's a booster issue. If you did this unplug it test with the mass airflow, what you need to understand is, well, let me back up. If you did this unplug it test, I think a lot of us would be, would be putting a mass airflow sensor in this car right now. You would not be fixing it. What you need to understand about the unplugged mass airflow sensor is it puts this car in a default mode. And now we're no longer using the mass airflow as our main input for fuel. And this booster vacuum leak is not, is not having as much of an effect because we're most likely using the MAP sensor now. Right, this does have a map. It has a map, TPS, RPM. They're going to use a combination of the three. And the default strategy on this vehicle, it goes two ways. One, it can go like that. We use other sensors. We resort back to speed density. Now, what's a vacuum leak on a speed density engine do? Not much. Look at it. The other thing, too, you could explain, and I've seen this, unplug a map, you kill the map, the computer will enter a richer than normal strategy. And so now we're countering this lean condition with a little bit extra fuel from this default. But I don't see that here. Look, we're in closed loop. Look at these trim numbers. Definitely got a bad mass airflow sensor, right? But all I've done, guys, look, my vice grips are in my hand. All I've done is unplug the mass airflow sensor. If you need to see what this does at a higher RPM, can you uh, hold this at two grand for me? You having a hard time holding that steady? Go a little higher, so if you have to. Go a little higher. Memory's rich. We're still countering that. Man, this Wow. All right, let it idle. Even at higher RPMs, these numbers look pretty good. I mean, I, I would, if I didn't know better, guys, I, I would have probably put a mass airflow sensor in this. So this mass airflow sensor is still unplugged. You see these numbers look great. And I, I want to uh, take a moment to thank a friend of mine. His name is Ross Wellwood. He was actually here at the school yesterday doing some uh, hybrid training for us in the evening. And it's funny because Ross was here when we first started looking at this and him and I both saw this condition. And this was like one of the last things we left with for the day. We hadn't pinpointed the problem yet, but this is what we saw. And, and, and looking at this at face value, I can, can you understand why both of us were thinking, hey, we're leaning toward this mass airflow because we're not finding a vacuum leak anywhere. But let's back up now. 
Let me plug the mass airflow back in. We may need to cycle the key for the computer to start using it. I don't know. We'll see the reaction here in a second. Mass airflow is plugged back in, and that is correct. The computer is not using that mass airflow because it had set that fault. So um, let's. Hang on one second. Stop communicating. Go ahead, turn the key off. Wait for five seconds. Turn the key back on after five and then restart it. Go ahead. And this is with our mass airflow sensor plugged back in. Can you do a quick snap throttle for me to update these scales? All right, that's good. You see our condition is back. Our lean condition is back. And again, we were thinking at least going toward the mass airflow because we didn't see any, any issues with the PCV, we didn't see any issues with the air pump system. We couldn't find any vacuum leaks at all. So we start kind of going in circles a little bit. Let me pinch this uh, brake booster hose back off again, let you guys watch the effect. Wait a minute, I'm gonna adjust my pliers here. All right, that is with my brake booster line plugged off and you see we fixed this condition almost exactly like unplugging the mass airflow did. So what's the lesson here? How do we avoid this? I think one of them is use what we know already, which is when we have fuel trim problems that are very bad at idle and we raise our RPM and it gets better, it's not a mass airflow problem. This is the rule that we've been following. This is the rule that I've been following. This is what I said yesterday. We revisited this today and we were questioning ourselves. I mean, is there a scenario where we, we may see differently? There could be. But I think this rule that I'm following works and it helped guide us here. Guys, think about it. We raised our RPM and I know, listen, some of you are thinking, man, four grand on a dead rev, that's not a good idea. I know it's not. But I wanted to show the effect of a higher RPM, higher load and the fuel trim numbers. They got a lot better as we increase speed. We don't see mass airflows act that way. Mass airflows are opposite. They'll start low, start normal, and they'll get worse as you raise the RPM. Now we do see some that read negative fuel trim numbers at idle and then are worse lean at higher RPMs. I have a Subaru video that we showed that and I'll throw that hyperlink in here for that. In fact, I'll throw a couple other ones in here too where I'll throw the Toyota mass airflow hyperlink in here where I'm showing this effect. Higher RPM lean condition. I have a couple case studies in my book, same thing. So I think really that's what saved us here. This did not act like a mass airflow. What else? made it not a mass airflow. The car ran beautifully. Under load, driving the car, no issues whatsoever. No power complaints, perfect running conditions, under load. It was mainly an idle complaint and then poor gas mileage and that was it. So we stayed focused on some type of vacuum leak, booster hose, booster diaphragm was the issue and Again, uh, I think it's a warning to you guys on this unplug it test. I like the unplug it test, it works great. And you know what? It almost got us in trouble for sure. And I, I mean, I almost went that direction myself. But when Ross and I were talking about this late in the day, this is when, when all the students went home, we were just talking about the car a little bit. We both agreed that, you know, we did, we did get a reaction from unplugging the math, but something still wasn't right. And, you know, he wasn't here today to, to see the rest of this. I'm sure uh, he'll enjoy watching this. So hello, Ross, at a later time. Thanks for your, your help and your contributions to, to everything we do here. So hope you guys like that. Faulty booster. Don't forget when you do smoke tests to look inside the car for smoke. Not sure if we had it, but last thought. So hope you like that.